Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Let's worship God. Tell God what you believe to see today. Come on, tell Him what you believe to see today. Tell him what you believe to see today. Just mention whatever you believe God today to see. Come on, tell God what you believe to see today. Come on, tell God what you believe to see today. Let's take some time and speak in other tongues. Come on, speak another time. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, God. You have words to be praised. Come on, tell you Alpha.
before you God knowing very well that you are the author and finish of our faith that you that began the good work in us shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ God we must decrease and you must increase come on somebody give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise come on that is for your boast 
clap for Jesus. I, I will act like I didn't hear. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him chapter three, chapter three, chapter three, chapter three. Come on. Give them a high five and tell him chapter three. Chapter three. Chapter three. Tell him Katanika Butandis. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter twenty, verse five. Proverbs chapter twenty. In verses 5. If you're there, you say, Amen. Are we there? One, two, three, let's go. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters in a deep well, right? Or it's like a water in a deep well. Or some versions say it's like deep waters, right? So the Bible says, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will what? Draw it out. Read again. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. One more time. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. There's something I'm going to be sharing. It might begin complicated, but don't worry about it. At the end, it will be simple. <laughs> tell your neighbor, it will be simple. Hallelujah. Because I always tell people that we carry a simplicity in Christ. And that's a promise by God. It does not mean that the words are simple. It only means that we have the ability to understand the things of God. Because the Bible says it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of God. In other words, each one of us has the divine ability to know the secret things of Almighty God. Hallelujah. But even though they are simplicity to men of the covenant, it does not necessarily mean that they are simple. Hallelujah. That's why in, in Proverbs, he, he rebukes us and says, How long will you love simplicity? Some people enjoy sermons because they are simple. Oh, I like the way that preacher preaches. He preaches simple things. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet he tells us by virtue of the fact that revelation comes to our spirit, we ought not to love simplicity. We have to advance in depth every other day. We have to know him deeply. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We must know him deeply. That was a rebuke in Proverbs 122. He says, how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and the fools hate knowledge? Why? Because when a man loves simplicity, he delights in scorning and he hates knowledge. Hallelujah. So, the words of God are come to give subtlety to the simple. Verse 3, same chapter. He comes to give subtlety to the simple. He comes to, 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 to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Verse, next verse. And he says, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So, the word of God comes to make you deep. Tell your neighbor, the word of God comes to make me deep. <laughs> Say it again. Tell him, the word of God comes to make me deep. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. So let's continue. So, there's something I need to share with you. It's a bit complicated, but it's given to you to know. So I pray that knowledge will come as I share these things. Somebody say amen. amen. So we began by saying that counsel in a man is as deep waters. But only a man with understanding can what? Can draw it out. That means all of us carry a certain counsel. In our spirits by reason of the counselor, the existing Holy Spirit. But it does not mean that every man has the understanding to draw it out. Everything you need in this world is actually in you. Everything you need in this world is in you. Hallelujah. When God wanted to create man a helper suitable, he didn't go outside. He came into the man. And out of that man plucked out a rib. And the Bible says, and out of that formed a woman. Isn't it? That means that everything in this life that benefits you comes from within. Anything from without, it doesn't matter how wonderful it is, it's not yours. 
it carries no belonging. Same as his revelation. The Bible tells us that the revealed things belong unto us. But the belonging of those things is primarily not only what comes from without, without the experiences of within. The within experience has to be there to confirm as an affirmation, sorry, of the things confirmed outside. Somebody say amen. That means that everything that I'm communicating to you is actually in you. He says you are a written epistle known and read by all men. And we say as you're manifestly declared by us, everything we are preaching is actually you. We are not preaching a Jesus without you. It is a wrong understanding to preach a Christ without you. Because he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. I cannot talk about Jesus and you don't have a hunch in your spirit. Because Jesus is you and you are Jesus. This is love made perfect that we might have confidence on that day. For as he is, so are we in this world. He's in us, we're in him. That is the fullness of reconciliation. The Bible says he wanted to make in himself one new man. And that's doing what? Bringing peace. The only way peace can be achieved in this dispensation is when Christ is joined with, with a man. The Spirit of God joins with you and the two of you are one. It's the only way peace can come in this world. Hallelujah. So, for me, it's the grace and celebration of the oneness that I carry with Jesus Christ every other day. Because I know every time I read the word, I am reading me. This word is a mirror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it's like, it's like, it's like when we are narrating stories like Jesus was walking in Capernaum. I see myself walking in Capernaum. <laughs> are you, are you understand what I'm saying? I see myself doing what? Walking in Capernaum. Because me and him are... One. And the Bible says, and he went about doing good and healing all of them that were or Rabakota, oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Every time I read that, in my spirit I feel that we're doing it together. That is the experience of the word of God. The experience of the word of God. And that's why many people don't have results. You know why they don't have results? Because every time they read the scriptures, they separate themselves from God. They separate themselves from Christ. Are you hearing me? They say, hey, Jesus healed. You understand? And they say, Jesus healed. No, 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 no. You must understand that now you are in him. The present experience of the new creature affirms one truth invaluable. That everything Christ walked into and has done is actually you and you walk into. In him you live. Come on. In him you move. In him you have your, his, your own being. So there is nothing that describes you outside Jesus. Any sermon or any gospel that seeks to separate you from Christ is not actually from God. Because he came for one thing, that he might be joined together. Remember the Bible says, for this reason shall a man leave his own household and be joined together with his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Jesus is not entirely flesh. He is spirit. The true experience of him joining with a church had to be that when he and the church join, they become one spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. So, the blessed assurance of being one spirit with God. In other words, when you're laying hands on the sick, you're not just laying hands on the sick. No, Jesus is laying hands on the sick. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? When you walk into your office, Jesus is walking into your office. Are you hearing me? Everything that you do and say, you do because you understand that you are one with him. It is called love. Tell your neighbor, it's called love. The perfection of this love had to bring that unity. Somebody say, amen. amen. Now, we all carry counsel, right? Because we carry the counselor. In a heart of man, he says, it's like deep waters. But only a man with understanding can draw it out. Are we together at that level? Tell your neighbor we're going deeper. Let's open Proverbs. I pray you, you understand where I'm, where I'm going. 18 verses 4. Proverbs 18 verses 4. Now I want us to read that. <laughs> now, the Bible says the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. And the Bible says and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Come on. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. 
And the wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Let's begin from where we began from. Cancer in a man's heart is as deep waters, but only that man with understanding will draw it out. And then this side it says that the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Let me explain this. What is in the heart of certain men is on the lips of other men. Do you understand? But men with understanding can draw it. C can I say it again? What is on the heart, in the heart of certain men as deep waters, counsel, is the words of certain men. That means that sometimes by identity, what defines you inside, right, can be demonstrated on a man's lips. I don't know whether I'm making sense. Eh? What I'm trying to say is, there are things in men's hearts that other men speak. I don't know that I'm making sense. That when those men speak, they speak what is in your heart. It's not news. It was there. But understanding is a, is a form of perception. And that is why in Proverbs, when he's talking about, uh, in, in the verse 1, he speaks of perceiving the words of understanding. Because understanding carries a degree of perception. That is why when they're explaining something for you to understand, you, 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 you say something like, Ah, oh, I see. You understand what I'm saying? Really understanding carries a certain form of perception. I don't know that I'm making sense. I don't know that I'm making sense. So, what is in some men's hearts is on some men's lips. Do you understand? And the wisdom, if we can go back to, 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 to where we began from, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. You understand? That means that the qualification of any brook, spiritually, right, is the flow of wisdom. Wisdom qualifies, oh, I don't know whether somebody understands what I'm saying, but men of God understand what I'm saying. The qualification of wisdom, the qualification of wisdom in any degree, right, is a flow of a man's brook. That means if a brook dries out, it doesn't matter how articulate a man is. That man carries not wisdom. That is why the Bible says wisdom is a defense. Somebody say amen. When we say that a brook on a man's life has dried, it means that the wisdom in him is seized. It doesn't mean that he will not speak the right words. It doesn't mean that he will not do certain things. Yes, he might be able to do them, it's true. But there's something in him that has seized, and it's wisdom. Wisdom qualifies the results in every Christian. It might not be said, but it's in a man's spirit. There are many men who don't appear to know, but they know. They know. Because the words of the spirit, spiritual language, is way deeper than any physical language. The language of the spirit, the spirit of revelation, when it comes on you, you when it comes into you, it does not come to you with human words. Whatever is revealed to your spirit doesn't come by human language. It comes by the language of the spirit. Are we together? That is why when, when Paul speaks of that experience, of the believer, he speaks of how we compare spiritual things with spiritual things. You're in the spirit world, and then you start to compare. Nothing physical in that experience. But let me go back to what I was trying to say. What is in the heart of certain people, God has placed in the lips of certain men. And I'll explain to you those men. 
I'll explain to you the biblical qualification of those men. Somebody say, Amen. Let me give you an example. When God was calling Moses, let's open our Bibles. Exodus chapter 4, verses 10. Are we following? Exodus chapter 4, verses 10. You remember the time when God meets Moses and he wants to send him? You remember that? Now the Bible says, Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here too, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and I am what? Of a slow tongue. Let's continue. And the Lord said unto him, Who has made man's mouth? Right? Oh, who maketh the dumb or day for the seeing or the blind? Have I, have not I the Lord? In other words, I, I, I can fix that. I can fix the dumb chap and he speaks. Right? Next verse. Now therefore go, and I will be thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Now I want you to underline that word because we're going to come back there. Teach thee what thou shalt say. You know, everything Moses spoke, God told him. Right? There's a difference between when a man says, I was praying and the Lord told me, say this. And then you say. Right? But there's also another dispensation where God teaches the man the words to say. In other words, you're not just the conduit or a medium through which God speaks and communicates. No. He honors you enough to first explain to you what must be communicated. That is the only way you can partake in the fullness of the things of God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't know if I'm making sense. Can I say it again? It's one thing when you say, I receive things from God, but I don't know their meaning. That means you're just the medium through which God speaks. How do together? But it's another when God teaches you what to say. He doesn't tell you what to say. He teaches you what to say. He doesn't tell you. He doesn't tell you what to say. He doesn't tell you, you say, this is blue, and then you stand up and say, this is blue. No. He goes ahead and teaches you what to say. That when you say, you're taught in what you say. You don't just say, no. You're taught in what you say. Somebody say, that's my portion. Say it again. Say, that's my portion. In the name of Jesus. Are we together? Now let's continue. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is it not Aaron? Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Next verse. And thou, listen shall speak unto him and put words into his mouth and I will be, the Bible says, with thy mouth and with his mouth. Right? And I will teach you what ye shall do. Are we together? So he says, okay, Aaron is your brother. He's a good speaker. I'm going to use him. I will get your words and I'll put your words in his mouth and I will be with your mouth and, I, and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. So, Moses carries the teaching. Aaron carries the words. Are we together? Now, look at something very amazing here. Let's continue in the verses 29. So, many things and so, same chapter. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And he said, and Aaron led him, speak all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses. And, and who did the signs? Who did the signs? And did the signs in the sight of the people. Who was doing the signs? Come on. Who was doing the signs? Aaron. It was Aaron. It was Aaron. Moses carried the words, but he could not articulate them. When he puts his words into Aaron, Aaron speaks exactly the heart of Moses. And Aaron gets the results of what is in Moses' heart. Tell anybody, there are some people who have words that your heart understands. And I want to show you how to be that person. 
Tell him, but sh- tonight. Tell him, but tonight. I'm walking in that grace. In the name of Jesus. It can happen. It can happen. Because it's one thing when you have something in your heart. But if you can't say it, you can't manifest it. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. If your tongue is not fixed, you can't have results. I'll give you another example. If you wouldn't mind. Exodus chapter 7. Verses 8. Remember now they stand before Pharaoh. Do you remember that time? And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron saying, Listen. Uh-huh. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you saying, Show me a miracle for you. He says, Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh and it shall become a serpent. Did you hear that? When Pharaoh shall speak unto you saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say, Who is this? Moses. And to who? Aaron. That take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and it shall become a snake. Next verse. And Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants and it became a what? It became a serpent. And the next verse says, And then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. Uh For they cast down every man his road, and they became serpents. But Aaron's road swallowed up their roads. Why? Because every time Aaron became Moses' voice, the miraculous went on to Aaron. Read the scriptures. Anywhere Moses speaks without error, he separates seas. He parts waters. You understand? He, 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 he brings plagues with his mouth. The moment Aaron comes in, the miraculous goes on Aaron. So, Aaron is doing what is in Moses' spirit to do. But because he has the words of Moses, he can do the actions of Moses. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Am I making sense? Aaron... God didn't call Aaron. He called Moses to deliver the children. Oh, he didn't call Aaron. But Aaron had words. Somebody say Aaron had words. Say it again. Say Aaron had words. Aaron had what? He had words. So now what Aaron would do is, if you look through the scriptures, every time Moses allows to speak through Aaron, you see God completing the miraculous through Aaron. Do you remember the time when he says, bring all the sticks representing the tribes of Israel? Do you remember that time? When he gets Aaron's stick and puts it in there, his wasn't. His wasn't. The moment all those sticks come out, the Bible says, when they took it into the tabernacle, right, of the presence, when it came out, Aaron's rod what? Budded. It. And the Bible says, he commanded all the other ones to be removed and only one rod to stay in the tabernacle of his presence. Why? Because Sometimes, if it is in your heart, but doesn't have the articulation, the man with articulation will show more results than the man who only has it in the heart. Because cancer in a man's heart is as deep waters, but a man with understanding can draw it out. Because if it is not drawn out to come out with words, you will never have the results of what you affirm in your spirit. And you prove to know in your heart as true. Let me speak to the equipment. Listen to me. <laughs> Am I making sense? That is why when God is speaking about doors, He says, pray for us that the Lord might grant us door of utterances, doors of utterance, doors of utterance, doors of utterance, doors of utterance. Yes, we carry the revelation of these things, but you need doors of utterance. You need to carry the utterance of what is inside you. See, you understand prayer by revelation. But if it, if it doesn't come to your lips, it doesn't carry understanding. The grace to get this thing out of your spirit 
and come on your lips, it carries understanding. And that understanding produces the results of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it is in your heart, but it cannot be spoken or articulated the right way by your mouth, you might carry the experience of the call, but not the glory that comes with the demonstration of the very conviction of things that you are firm to believe. And that is why God has called you two ways. He has not only called you to have stuff in your heart, but He has called you with the ability to articulate and speak forth what is inside you. Because if it is spoken in understanding, the results come. He teaches your spirit and it receives instruction. But when it comes to the mouth, the mouth must carry a certain understanding. In other words, I perceive to be truth by my spirit, and then I have the power of it to bring it out of my mouth, understood. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are we together? Now, <laughs> we are going deeper. If you look at Moses and Aaron, and you're an ardent student of the scriptures, you realize that Moses is a representation of the law. Do, do we agree? And ladies and gentlemen, the law carries no utterance. It doesn't. That is why a man under the law will struggle demonstrating the spirit. Why does he struggle demonstrating the spirit? Because the law can't articulate. can't articulate. He will have to go through too much to demonstrate what can be received in simplicity. There's a reason why every time God gets into the inner circles of demonstration, he uses Aaron and Moses. He goes out, yes, he can use Moses in a plague, but when he comes to the inner things of the, the doors inside, right? He realizes that he doesn't use Moses. Because remember the law, eh? was the schoolmaster that led us to the church. Do you understand? The, the law is beneficial when it's outside the church. <laughs> but when it leads you to Christ, Christ takes over and the law is dispersed. That is why they can be outside of most Pharaoh's camp and do all this. But when they get inside the what? <laughs> the camp, eh? The court of Pharaoh. Most Aaron's anointing takes over. I don't know if I'm making sense. The working of grace can be clearly attested when you look at the ministry of Aaron. He didn't call himself. <laughs> he was demonstrating what was coming out of another chap. Do you understand what I'm saying? This one goes on the mountain, does 40 days, comes back. This guy just demonstrates. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Tell your neighbor things can come easy. In the name of Jesus. Tell him things can come easy for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you think you have to go through 20 years to build a house, 30 years to get married, 16 years to build a ministry, 75 years to... Oh no! Tell your neighbor, that is not me! That is not me! In the name of Jesus, that is not me! Why? Because grace is available. What is grace in this instance? Divine enablement. He takes the fasting. <laughs> you receive the miraculous. He carries the understanding. Gives it through your spirit. And you receive the utterance. Do you remember when, when God appears to Moses for signs? He tells them, cast down your rod. And it becomes into a serpent. All of us thought eh, that when all of, in fact, many of you think that the same rod was the one put before Pharaoh. It wasn't. God couldn't allow the Lord to take that glory. <laughs> uh, do you understand? He went through a what? Aaron, even though Moses' rod was the first one to prove that it turns into a serpent. When we go to Pharaoh, God says, no, not Moses, Aaron. 
Let him, let him want to come on, wait, wait, God. Mine, now I think what Moses is saying, mine has the ability. You even showed me. Mine is even different, you understand? I went and, 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 and I left Pharaoh's house, right? And then I went into the wilderness, looked after just those stuff. I, I suffered. So burning bushes, where was Aaron? Picking flowers. Do you understand? Now I come with all this thing I've sought God Burundi. We reach in front of Pharaoh. You, you tell me not your road, sir. But who? Let me tell you. Eh? When the Bible says that I have sent you wherewith other men have labored. Do you know the meaning of that? <laughs> it means there are certain people who have labored for you to enter therein. Me, I have a long list of them. Apostle Paul, Peter, who, you understand, James C., Johnny, the Revelator, Island of Patmos, put in fire. So, you understand? They, 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 do you know why they went through all that? That when you come on the scene, oh, when you come on the scene, I decree upon my life that things will come easy for me. I say it again, I decree upon my life that things will come easy for me. I say it again. I decree upon my life that things will come easy for me. Why? Somebody paid the price. Tell your neighbor somebody paid the price. Tell your neighbor somebody paid the price. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll drive cars easily. You'll build houses easily. You'll do ministry easily. Signs, miracles, and wonders will happen easily. <laughs> I wish you were in Botswana. There's a lady, recently were there. There's a lady who, who came. Her both eyes were dead. Both, both. So she came to me and said, Why not God pray for me? I, it was just like, so I just did like in the name of Jesus, I command these eyes to open. No, no screaming. And she says, I see lights. I say, close again. I see people. <laughs> Actually, two people saw. But you see, some person, Rakaya. <laughs> Tell your neighbor things are happening easy for me. Tell your neighbor things are happening easy for me. Rato Lebo Zita. Come on, speak in tongues for 15 seconds. I'm still continuing, but first get that. Get it in your spirit. Mara Kore Bataneka. Mate Lebo Ribakaya. Zaba Kate Lebro Kondelea. Zapotile Kayote. Rato Leba Yela. Zaba Kotelea. Receive it. Rima Kolikate. Payeri Kandelea. Sareka. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. I'm still preaching. Things are happening for me. Ate quicker. Ate quicker. 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 We are already full. <laughs> First day. <laughs> First day. You look behind and see. <laughs> we are already full. First day. Somebody say things. Somebody say things. You say things are happening. Quicker than ever before in my personal life. Why? Because I'm a child of grace. Tell your neighbor I'm a child of grace. Tell your neighbor I'm a child of grace. Promotions come easier because I'm a child of grace. Deliverance comes easier because I'm a child of grace. Signs, miracles, and wonders come easier because I'm a child of grace. I'm a child of grace. Moses gets onto the rock. He gets angry. Huh? He gets what? Angry. Because they're demanding for water. That's why I tell men of God, 
Be careful when you're angry. It can cost you. He did one thing in anger and slew an Egyptian and God took 40 years without talking to him because he did one act of anger. One act of anger can affect 20, 30, 40 years of your destiny as a man of God. Don't ever act in anger. Oh, I'm angry. I've decided. I'm angry. You remove your shoes. I've died. I'm angry. I've decided. This time, uh, uh, this, uh, I'm done. done. Uh, I'm angry. You, it can cost you years. The same thing comes when he's about to leave. He gets on the rock. Smites it three times. What happens? God tells him you're not going to see the promise. Land. Aaron was not a perfect man too. He wasn't. You remember when they talk about Moses, about marrying a Kusite woman? And the Bible says God calls them from the tent, and then he takes from the tent of his presence, and then he takes them to it. In faith, he asks them, why are you not afraid to speak about my servant Moses? When I speak through prophets, I speak to them through visions and dreams, but that's not how so I speak with Moses. For I speak with Moses face to face, and he beholds my very similitude. Why are you not afraid? The Bible says, immediately, Leprosy hit Miriam. Aaron just looked around and went, why? <laughs> Grace. <laughs> Moses does it. They refuse him to go to the promised land. Aaron screws up. He still stays the man. Nothing. That is why sometimes I tell saints, eh? two people can talk about a man of God, but Miriam, you better have an effort. You better have enough grace on your life. <laughs> I don't know that it made sense. Two people can talk about a their pastor, but you better have an effort. You'll understand one day. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm continuing. So, I stand to see that Aaron is a picture, true representation of what the grace of God does. When Jesus is speaking about the grace, he tells you, I'm not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. The law can only be fulfilled by grace. Aaron can only be demonstrate what is in Moses. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You remember when he's speaking about circumcision? I think in Romans 4. He asked, how was righteousness imputed on us? Was it before circumcision or after circumcision? How was it? Were you made righteous because of the things you did? No. Not before circumcision. Righteous as... Not, the Bible says that, how was it then recorded? When he was in circumcision or in, or in uncircumcision? The Bible says, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Right? And the next verse says, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all of us that believe, though they be not circumcised, the righteousness might be imputed unto them also. If it is a work, then it is no longer grace. It is a wage. If you think you have to do everything in this life to be blessed by God, then he, he, he ought to pay you. That is not of grace. Grace is when you don't work and allow him to work. I don't know why some people don't see results and they still can't see that that is a problem. Now to him that worketh is a reward, not recorded of grace, but of death. But unto him, next verse, but unto him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Moses goes on the mountain. He prays, looks after Kato. After that, just Aaron eats the glory. I'm not saying we don't pray. I'm only telling you our prayers is not what takes us there. I'm not telling you that we don't fast. I fast more than many of you, if not a big chunk of you. But I don't fast to be a success. I don't pray to be a success. Oh God, ah, ah, God, I this meet. Oh God, I pray for this meeting. Oh, no, 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 no,
That's not how you do it. The life of prayer is supposed to be a love relationship. Are you hearing me? It's not supposed to be a, a platform where you do to please him such that he can do for you. That is the law. That is why many of you don't have a wonderful prayer life. Because it is all patterned around what you can do for him, for him to do for you. I don't go to God to, to, to tell la, 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 so, so that he can do certain things for me. No. My prayer life, my fasting life, my giving life, everything in my act of worship is personal to him because of the relationship. Not for the demand. Because when you understand what you've been blessed with in the spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, you realize that it's a wrong thing to go back to seek to receive what you already have. That is why he says with thanksgiving, make a request. He doesn't say request and then thank. No. Me, when I go in the presence of God, I thank him. My life of relationship with him is, is, oh. It's like recently I was, I was, I was, you know, fellowshipping with him. And then I stumbled on something in Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 14. Open there. I want to show you something. Open. Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 14. Now, I was reading this, right? He says, For we must needs die, and are as water split on the ground, which cannot be gathered again. Are you listening to that? In other words, we are like water. When you spit it on the ground, it can't be gathered again. But he said, neither does God respect any person. And the Bible says, yet does he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. You, when you screw up, you're like pouring water on the ground. When you mess up, when you wrong, when you sin, it was like pouring water on the ground. It cannot be taken back into the cup. But he has divine means that even when, he, when we were banished then, we were still his. He says, he, 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 he devised means that he is banished. They are banished, but they are still his. Oh, what a love. He says, he has devised means that he is banished, be not expelled. Even though serving you was like putting water back into a cup, which you've poured out, but he did it. <laughs> now, if while you are still evil, he could still say, you're my banished. I'll not let you to get expelled. Do you want to tell me you became born again to go to hell? Answer me. Do you want to tell me that God saved you for you to go to hell? I, I thought I can't go to hell. I, listen, I can't go to hell. He paid a very heavy price for me to go to hell. I don't know that you understand. I am the beloved of God. I must know that before any man encourages me in the Lord. What a love. When I read those things, I just find myself in prayer. I can pray the whole night on that scripture. The whole night. The whole night. The whole night. I, I, was, I read it and for one hour, I was just hit. And then he started pouring out love. You understand? Eh? I have service, but it's not, it's not in my head. I, I now have to preach. That's, that's insignificant. Why? Because oh, this is love made perfect. Because when a man is perfected in it, he will have confidence on that day. Sometimes we do things and I'm like, no. He loves me too much to fail me. <laughs> Listen, what people plan to do in your life is not comparable to what God is planning. And there is nothing anybody can do to you can override what God is planning. David fought with enemies. <laughs> he said that mine, my, mine enemies have increased even more than the hairs on my head. You can imagine. Some of you have three people. 
who are writing about you, you already have issues. This guy had guys. He says, my enemies were more than the hair on my head. When you count the people who hated the man, they were more than the hair of his head. And then the scripture says, and David served God in his generation. Tell your neighbor, I'm bigger. I'm bigger. Tell your neighbor, I'm bigger. If it wasn't for the grace of God, the church would be dead. I wish some of you understand what I mean. If it wasn't for the grace of God, the church would be dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, how can I think that? That is why the Bible says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. And I'm going to explain what that corruption is. He says, but that which is what? Good for edification to the hearers, that it might minister grace unto the hearers. He says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edification, that it may minister grace and to the, that's not a request. That is a command. The beginning of corruption is when a man leaves the grace and goes legal. That's why he says that I fear. Least out of your witness, you might be what? Deceived by the subtlety of the serpent. Like he deceived who? Adam and Eve. That you should be corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. The beginning of that corruption of a man's spirit is when a man speaks things that are not for edification, but are for condemnation. And then he leaves things that minister grace to the hearers, and then he ministers judgment to them. Corruption is when you start to speak judgment where grace is supposed to be availed. Some people enjoy it when they tell you, you are going to die. They say, oh... The pastor preached a very powerful sermon today, by the way. You can die. You can die. That's what the pastor said. He said a very powerful sermon today. Yes, you can die. You can die. You know that? You can die. You know, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to say a hard statement. Eh? I know it's too good to be true. But you see, it's God's love on you. It's, you're not dealing with God on your terms. Uh-uh. You're dealing with God on his terms. You're not the one seeking him. He was the one seeking you. He left his throne of glory and came to you. He started the relationship. And he that began that good work in you shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. Anything in the middle should only minister grace. Because we are sure of the man's end. The author shall finish it. I can't minister the law in the middle when I'm sure that I'm not the one who is finishing it. The one who is finishing it came with grace and truth. I can only minister that because I, that's the only certainty. Let him deal with the details. His, my personal responsibility is simple to give you him because he is grace. Are we together? Are you following me? So, Aaron becomes the true figure, an example of that. When a man ministers corruption, you realize that many spirits in the church and the body of Christ today are actually corrupt against truth. That it's not that they are struggling to know what is true. They are actually struggling to unlearn what has been wrong for so long that when truth comes, truth becomes wrong. Truth becomes wrong. That is why I realize when you preach grace and you're misunderstood, preach it more. Don't explain it. Uh -uh. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Because grace is revealed. Grace is revealed. It can't be explained. It is not a mathematical number. It, it is not a carnal experience. It is a spiritual experience. It can only be revealed. When Paul was hitting the church, he, he says, I persecuted the way. 
I persecuted the way and was, he persecuted the way. In his head he thought, ah, I think I'm serving God. In fact, he was sure he was serving God. Very sure. Very sure. But for such a man, light has to first shine on him. If it doesn't, you can never convince such a man. You can't. The only thing you do is preach it deeper. Why? Because there are people who hear you. There are always people who hear you. Who and others choose not to? Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. Now, I want to bring this to a close. Romans 8, chapter 3, verse 4. He says, for what? Romans 8, chapter 3, verse... Romans 8, verse 3. What does it say? It says, one, two, three, let's go. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, stammering, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Praise God. Praise God. The law could, what it couldn't do, the law could tell you you're wrong, but it could not get you out. I don't know if I'm making sense. Can you go back? Give me the message of that. Message version. The Bible says God went for the jungler when he sent his own son. He didn't deal with the problem as something remote and unimportant in his son Jesus. He personally took on the human condition, entered the disordered mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. The law code, weakened as it always was by fractured human nature, could never have done that. The law always ended up being used as a band aid on sin instead of a deep healing of it. The, the law is like an, a band aid. You understand? You have a wound then you, but it doesn't heal it. It doesn't heal it. It doesn't heal it. Next verse. And now, what the law called asked for, but we couldn't deliver, is accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. There is a man who is saying, I need results. I've been praying for one hour. And there is a wrong thing. Eh? I've heard people say, well, if you're doing something and you don't have results, you must change how you're doing it. And that's truth to that level. But then they spoil it at a particular point. And then they say, if you've been praying for one hour and it doesn't work, increase it to two hours. Then increase it to three hours. What have they gone back to? To wax. They were right at the beginning. Because it's always knowledge. It's always knowledge. Tell your neighbor, it's always knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, somebody says, Aha, I think I've not been fasting. Uh, let me add more. Let me add more. Add, and I told you I fast, but I don't fast for anything. I fast to be with him. I just, I just want, you, you know what the Bible is very clear when you beat the flesh to subjection? You understand? You beat the flesh to subjection. Just to be with him. Me, my prayer life is just with him. With him. I just, I, I, I leave food such that we can be together and do what? Nothing. I just sit there. <laughs> there was a time I woke up. I never... And, and I just said, you know what, God, today I'm with you. I abandoned everything. We sat the whole day. No, he's n I'm not talking, he's not talking. No, no, we are kawa. <laughs> 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 then there's a man redoubling efforts. Makayala <laughs> kosata. You understand? <laughs> but what is in his head? What is in his head? His head is telling him, Well, spread the of Kuisa over the mama. Mukama Taja Kuita Mudirisa, Jakukula Koka Sala, Aitamu Roof. Let me tell you, some men have prayed. Some men have prayed, even their voices died. Never the Kuru Sose. Nan Saba. Nakwa Satu Mukaga. Gangamba Mukama, Mkoyo Wavu. 
baptized. <laughs> <laughs> King, that's what he promised. With the chap is on a prayer mountain praying for my, because he's poor and, and, and he thinks that by prayer he's going to move God. I had a certain guy one time on radio. He said, I said I was tired of poverty. I went three months and I told my wife, I'm not coming back until God does something in this house. He spent three months on the up to today, they are still struggling. Tell your neighbor knowledge. 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 And this is what the Lord told me. That when a man understands not just the doctrine and idea, but the spirit which is of grace, he not only carries the understanding in his spirit, but he carries the word that men's hearts understand. This generation, I told people the move of God has changed. Those days of Simanya, the special man of God, they have come to an end. <laughs> the Bible is clear. Each shall march in their own ranks. Each one, they shall, they shall. Not the man of God will know. They shall. It's no longer one person. No, 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 no. God is raising people upon people upon people upon people upon people upon people upon people. I was telling people that what used to kill our nation back in the day and the church then was we used to have one special man of God with the ability to do it. So when he's out of the country, uh, you wish you to, you brought him earlier. When Pastor Stephen was around, you wish that one would have been. Now the man is out of the country. It, they call it being led by the Holy Spirit when, when they bring the person earlier. And that is why revivals never last. Because revivals are looked at particular movements in a certain dispensation instead of the personal work of each man with Christ. I don't know if that made sense. Listen, revival is not just a particular event in a time period. If it is so, it will end. Because at the end of the day, we fix our eyes on revival and not the person. Revival is every man experiencing God and walking with him. If you have 5,000 men experiencing God and walking with him, that is supposed to be revival. And in every generation, if just that seed can be multiplied, you can't lose it. Because at the end of the day, it's not on the man to do. It's on the generation. That gives you more responsibility. Some of you think that I'm more responsible on the pulpit than you are when you're seated. And that is why I had a problem with people who think that it's enough to have a president who is a Christian. A minister who is a Christian. If we have these people who are in top positions, he said, I shall make you the head and not the tail. That means... That we are okay. I want a CEO who is a Christian. And they think that that's enough. And I saw CEOs who are Christians but without results. They were even worse. The generation God wants to raise. Eh? When you're a minister, government, you carry it to certain depth. If you say you're the president of a nation, when they call you to teach in church, they say, no, this man had to be a president. Says that the grace on our spirits can multiply through many. Why? Because this is the working of the Holy Spirit by His grace through us. Now listen to what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you here. Do you know how many people are struggling to get what they already have if they embrace the spirit of grace? Do you know how many people are on the mountains chasing what is available to them by grace because they don't know? And they say, ah, I understand it. Then why don't you have results if you understand it? The understanding of anything comes with the results of it. It comes with the results of it. Are you hearing me? And I thank God for our generation. God is pouring out something. It was beginning this November. That's why we shifted in November. We didn't just shift in November because that's when we got money. We had money before. We shifted in November because there's something that is being poured out on our nation again. 
again, again. And that is why I appeal to every man of God, business person, whoever you are, in your way, expand your tent. <laughs> expand your tent. Even if you have two products, put them up there and just expand it. And allow God to feel it. He will. Saints, He will. Saints, He will. Saints, He will. I sense that now we are entering another crazy period of the willingness of the Spirit of God operating in the lives of men to respond to every man's vision. Listen to me. Listen to me. November. Mark this. We are through December. Watch Daniel all through. You understand? Because in, I also saw that in Feb, there's also going to be another definition there. February, end of February there. If you're a man of the Spirit, you understand what I'm saying. Right now, certain things are starting to change. And if you're not, if you don't get this, I don't know. Some of you think you have to enter into a fast. Not necessarily. Fast because you want to be one with Him. But don't fast for anything. God has revealed that all these things have been availed. It is your time. Tell your neighbor, it is your time. But I cannot see a man going on the mountain for 40 days. Going on the mountain for 20 days. And then he comes back. Are you hearing me? And another man takes the glory. Because one man functions under the spirit of grace. The other one works under the spirit of works. Those are dead works. How do you think Moses felt when he did everything that he did by God and he didn't go there? How do you think he felt? How do you think he felt? And do you realize that that is the only body written in scriptures that the devil fought for? He loves such bodies. He could have tried to manufacture any spirit to walk in the same body or create a certain monument around it because he loves it when men work in their own effort and ignore the abilities of God and the availability of his spirit working in us. You remember what he has said in Romans? Chapter 3, verse 4, the message Bible. He says, And now what the law God asked for, but we could not deliver, is accomplished. Listen, present continuous. As we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply, simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. There's a man right now screaming and redoubling prayer. But there's also another man right now simply embracing what the Spirit is doing. The Spirit loves to operate in men whose willingness is availed to embrace what he's ready to release than men who are trying to work out to move him to release. Somebody raises up their holy hands and says, hey, Father, I feel your Holy Spirit has something for me. I don't know what it is, but I feel it is there. And it's not supposed to be done by my works. It's supposed to be done by him. Now, can I just open my spirit and tell you that right now I'm available. Do it in me. Yes, I didn't fast, maybe. Yes, I did. But I am ready to receive. And a man walks in it. And another man redoubles their efforts. Let me tell you, people have prayed. Women have fasted for marriages. Pastors have fasted for their ministry. Saints, people have prayed. People have given to see God. People have gone on mountains and then rain hits them and then they, they left their little children, toddlers, two, three years at home. Not that it was wrong to leave them. And you realize even we men of grace do all these things. But we don't do these things because we want God to move. We do them because he moved. Paul says, I labored more than all my brethren. Yet not I, but the grace of God that labored within me. 
I know people who leave their little children and then go for ministry. But they're not going to do it because they think God is going to appear more. No. But they're doing it because they believe He has appeared to them. There's a difference. And both of us are working. But one man is working the true works of the Spirit and another man is working in dead works. All of us are doing the same things, but we have different results. Because as one does all these things, they feel they have to redouble their efforts for God to move while the other does it because they're simply embracing God's move on them. A man who has understood just the doctrine to the Spirit of grace, I've realized this and never forget this. God creates an ever constant consciousness of your spirit to receive something distinct any time, any day by his love. You understand? When a man understands the spirit of grace, he is ever in anticipation of not what God is going to do, but of what God is doing in his life. He has an ever constant fixated configuration in his spirit that God every other day is working in me both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. It doesn't mean that we get everything right. It only means that even when we get it wrong, we still say, for when I am weak, then I am strong. For my strength is made perfect in my weakness. One time I remember I was held in that trap. Eh? One time I prayed, I prayed, God moved. Then another time I stopped. I, that, there was like a period I didn't pray a lot. Then I said, I, uh, God is not going to move. And then I went into a meeting many years ago and God didn't move. And then I thought, okay, now every time I go into a meeting, I have to pray a certain way for God to move. And then I put a certain spell of prayer for a long time. And when I went into another meeting that day, God didn't move at all. I said, now wait. This time I have worked double, triple, quadruple. And you have not moved? But before I did it and you moved, and he told me very clearly, I did it in your ignorance. Because you are ignorant. I knew that I had to deal with you that way. Because either way, I, there was something I needed to execute. But then when I saw that you made it as a pattern for your ministry, I said, okay, pray. And I told him, what are you trying to tell me? He told me, simple. Can you have a prayer with just me loving you? Can we just be in love? Can we just enjoy time? Not because you want to have more members, not because you want to have another car, not because you want more anointing and more gifts. No. Can you just know me? This is eternal life that you might know the one true God and His only Son, Jesus. Can you still sit in your car and then feel the Holy Ghost and weep like a baby? You understand? Not because you, you want Him to move, but because He's still God. And, and I'm with you always until the end. Can, can you start a relationship with me that is not best on what you want me to do because I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heaven present Christ Jesus. Now, in the time when you ought to be receiving from me love, you're still bringing back on the table to ask what I've already fixed. From then on, I repented. And repentance meant I have never gone in the presence of God anxious for anything. There are meetings I enter and I didn't pray. But I don't condemn myself and I say, because I didn't pray, therefore the Holy Ghost is not going to move. No. There are even meetings I went into and I did not pray and He moved. Because I don't have a special moment of 3 a.m. anymore. Every time of mine is His. Praying always by the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? I'm not prompted by a pressure of an invitation to preach to pray. No. We are past that in this relationship. Do you understand? There are times I've gone for a meeting and, and he just tells me feast. And I eat and then I reach on the pulpit and he moves. Why? Because that's what he told me. One time I remember I was in a taxi going to preach somewhere. And then I started to pray. Rah, rah, rah. I told him, ah, ah, ah. Stop, 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 Grace. Can you just meditate on who I am? And I said, okay. And then I sat in that taxi many years ago. And then I meditated. 
and I just meditated on just how good he is. And I said to feel myself loading up in the Holy Ghost. I said to feel my I said to receive what I didn't ask for because he knew exactly what was needed there. And then I went into that meeting, I'll never forget it. It was a Sunday evening, and I opened my Bible and I read two lines. I was in, in a church in Kawempe. Two lines, and the whole church was hit by the power of God. After reading two lines, I sat and waited for God to finish slaying them so I can teach my mystery. Ten minutes, twenty, forty-five minutes. He told me to make a grace. Go home. I said, but I didn't go home. I left, went home. They called me after two and a half hours, in two, three hours, telling us that's when like the first person had woken up. Because sometimes we think we have enough to explain to men. Yet the Holy Ghost, yet the Holy Ghost can do it. From that day, I understood it. It was not about the 40 days on the mountain. When you find me there, don't think I'm seeking him for chapter 4. No. The chapters were already written for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus and two good works. And it says for which you are ordained that you might walk in. Nothing in the middle can frustrate that except if you lose your eyes from that ordination and then start working out the very things to walk into. Yet he has already pre-arranged you to walk therein. Do you know now I've understood why many people fail to break through in worship? Because worship for them is an experience of getting God down. For me, worship is an experience of gratitude for him coming down. For he came in the likeness of a slave and came in the form of a man. You understand what I'm saying? So, that, 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 that he's, for me, I'm celebrating him in me. When I worship God, I celebrate him in me. Not let us worship until God moves. No. In fact, when I focus on who he is in me, he starts to demonstrate. He starts to demonstrate. Because then my words articulate what is in my spirit. Now, that is why when you wake up in the morning and you're a businessman and you enter your, your shop, however small it is, oh, look at it and say, ah, you love me. Makotala. This thing is going to, is a business empire. This is, oh, you love me. You love me. I've not sold for one week, but my heart is at peace. Because I don't need to sell for one week for your covenant to be honored. It's not even about my sales. No. You give me power to make wealth that you might establish the covenant you made with Abraham. You cannot betray Abraham. Look at this shop. Even if I've not sold a week, I'm still grateful. Because mine is not selling a week or a month. Even if you look at your stock and it's growing old and nobody is buying it, don't be deceived into thinking that they need to buy the whole stock. For you to be a qualification. There are men whose stocks were bought and they're still with nothing. There was a time 50,000 was a lot of money. Now it's not. You say, I work with blessing. I know I don't have a job, but I'm blessed. I know that probably I didn't get the pay that I was expecting. But I, me, I remember even when I was banking, you could ask my friends. I just told them, me, I work on blessing, not salary. Not wages. That one million is not worth Jesus. You understand? The 1.5 they pay you, it is too small for the man who is embracing what the Spirit is doing in you. You realize that even at that workplace, you're just fulfilling divine purpose to heal a few sick people and raise the dead and then maybe get a few saved. You're not there to make a living out of that. It is too small for you. Too small for you. As told of a certain man of God, uh, the late Cobas, a certain man of God was telling a story of him. He said a very big guy who was macho with muscles came to him and told him, man of God, I honor you. Big muscles. He said, I feel the Lord tells me to become your personal bodyguard. Cobas. You know Cobas? 
He looked at the big giant and told him, you're too small to protect Cobas. This man you seem to protect has Jesus. He has the creator of heaven and earth. How can you possibly protect Jesus? I don't know the understand. Oh, tell your neighbor, I'm protected by God. I'm protected by God. So I want to finish. Embrace. November is a month God is opening up something in our nation. And the church, embrace. Embrace. If you're a funeral member, we're not just increasing and you're going to stay there. No. Understand me. Even if you're a visitor, you've partaken. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is something being poured on us men of God this November. Every time I look at it, I don't know why these days I just... Even today, the whole day, I was just in my bed rolling in love. You understand? Do you understand? Because it, it was, that's what God is preparing for you and I. Aaron can only embrace what Moses has prepared. And you can choose. There are men who are laboring for you to simply enter. Because after some man of God one time was writing, you raise your people in church, you preach to them, then some kagai comes. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. We have allowed God to work in us. Now, this is not a man. This is a generation. There are people who are seated there. They are not on this pulpit. But they understand exactly what I'm saying. Because some of you, if you look at your personal life, you're entering where men have just labored. It's just because you're pretending to be praying. But even when you're speaking in tongues, we will, somebody can look at you and say, say Arikwe. that wasn't you. That wasn't you. And that grace is unfair. And it will continue as long as you embrace the grace. I choose. Tell your neighbor, I choose. To embrace what the Spirit is doing in me than just redoubling my own effort to accomplish yet he has already accomplished in the name of Jesus when you receive that in your spirit you're going to realize that your life is going to change there are things sometimes that seem so big for me and I just think about them in my spirit. And I just raise up my holy hands and I say, thank you, God. Because the fact that that thought came in my head, you've started. You've started. And ladies and gentlemen, I've seen things come quickly. Quickly. In every aspect of my life. Quickly. Why? Because... I've embraced. I'm simply embracing. Up to now I still pray, but not to get. No. I pray because I'm simply receiving, not working out. And that is why I prophesy upon your life. That by reason of the word that has been spoken this evening, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You're opening your spirit to simply embrace and see how it does. See, see, see. What have I done? I simply say and he. It's just simple. There's a man who thinks that to demonstrate power, you need to pray for 45 minutes. But you see, even while I'm praying for you, I'm simply embracing what he has to do through me because I'm his workmanship. He ordained me for this. I decree upon your life that that which thought was going to slow you is in fact going to quicken you. That which the devil aimed for bad in your life 
I decree that he's going to turn into good. My God will turn into good. What the devil thought was, was war and rage against you. I decree and I declare that as you embrace what the Spirit of God is working in you, God is raising a standard. You thought you were delayed, but I want to decree and declare that God set you up for the right time in the name of Jesus. God will bring joy in your soul. And the reason why He will is simple. Because you're yielding to His working. You will fast more. You will pray more. You will give more. Not because you want to receive, but because you are satisfied that you've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Your prayer life changes in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now I speak as a minister of God. Many of you, you're going to enter into a grace and men are going to say, this he doesn't deserve. This is not fair. She did not make it. He didn't work for it. And it will be true that you didn't. But it is simply because you're embracing what the Spirit of God wants to do in you. Somebody simply receive. There is power in receiving. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold me down. Come on, speak in other tongues. You are the reason. Seated in my to You are the reason. We're taking it high, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, say. You have won.
has worked. Can you take a moment and just clap for God like He has done it? Come on! Tell somebody something about me just changed. Question. Tell somebody I carry the depth of words that answer the depths of counsel in a man's heart. And any man with understanding will listen to me. They will listen to me. I will change this world. Tell your neighbor Africa is mine, Europe is mine, Asia is mine. Hey, Rakota land. We want to wave to the people live streaming. I'm told Kuro University is on board. Ishaka is on board. You see you. Kumba. We love you. Hallelujah. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ and you want to give your life to Christ, can you come? Walk here. Walk here. You want to be born again today? You want to be born again today? Just walk here. Come and stand here. Anybody? God bless you. Anybody wants to give that? Just stand there. So let us stand there. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, ask your neighbors. Don't move out before we see salvation. This is the greatest miracle. You might convince another man to move out before they get served. Hallelujah. You are the people. You have won it all for me. Are there any others? We want to close, but are you there and you want to give your life to Christ? Look at what God is doing. Look at what God is doing. Look at what God is doing. Ask your neighbor, are you born again? You need Jesus. I feel there are more. have posed. Apostle Paul has posed. Apostle Peter has posed. Jesus himself, he has posed. I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again. From today, I choose to embrace 
what you did for me. I receive you both as Lord and Savior of my life. Today I'm born again. In Jesus' my name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest